We educate, advocate for, and connect our members with opportunities to build their cultural intelligence in order to effectively engage communities, employees, and customers. Why cultural intelligence? Evolution in our industry and in, in the entire business world has occurred. When Dr. Rohini Anand gets up and presents, you'll see that uh, uh, she sees the world the same way we do. More global, more multicultural, more personal. Now, diversity and inclusion is a very, very important part of our history and an important part of business today, but it too will have to evolve to become more personal. More understanding of cultures instead of just colors. And then our focus will be more around cultural intelligence. We have bet the bank on cultural intelligence going forward because we believe this truly is going to be the language of business going forward. Lastly, let me say, the way we look to define cultural intelligence is around having the knowledge, skills, and capability to effectively, emphasis added, effectively engage people. The Gallup data tells us when you engage people, your outcomes go through the roof. And our purpose is to really promote cross-cultural knowledge and information because that's what our industry is made up of, black and white and brown, and Latino and Asian, gay, straight, disabled, and fully abled. And the more you communicate, the better off we are. Our goal, as I said, is engaging. Sodexo is a large corporation, and my work at Sodexo has been about creating an inclusive culture, ensuring that every single person in that organization, regardless of who they are, is able to reach their fullest potential. And clearly it's about cultural intelligence because it's about navigating cultures, you know, coming to the United States, navigating cultures within the United States, and basically having the awareness, knowledge, and skills to shift into just one style in order to achieve whatever outcomes one wants. Because there still is a shortage of skilled talent, which is why universities like Johnson & Wales is, are so very important to the corporate sector. Because we want students who are prepared for the future. We want students who have global mindsets. We want students that can work for global companies. We want students that are comfortable in global environments. That's what we are looking for, and that's why you are so important to the success of our companies. The cultural intelligence piece is critical to Sodexo's survival and to Sodexo's growth for a couple of reasons. If we look at the marketplace, we know that uh, in a very commoditized business, we're looking for differentiators all the time. And for us at Sodexo, diversity and inclusion is a, a differentiator. Cultural in culturally intelligent managers are a differentiator. We need to have managers who understand their needs, who can provide goods and services to meet their needs, and who can manage very, very cross-cultural, multicultural teams. We are about preparing the workforce of the future, and that's about developing the leadership competencies. It's about attracting, developing, and retaining the best talent to meet our growth needs. And it's about developing those cross-cultural competencies to manage global teams, and then ultimately it's about diversity really leading to innovation. There's plenty of research out there that suggests that diverse teams come up with, with solutions, more nuanced solutions, more innovative solutions than homogeneous teams. So organizations, their leadership team, where they're doing their scenario planning, they're saying, not only do we need the Latino consumer, we need to be more uh, intelligent and more understanding of the Latino talented professional. Cultural intelligence. You need to know this stuff. Okay? Your competitors know this stuff. So think about it. At $1 trillion, that makes the Latino consumer spend the U.S. one of the top, well, I'd say, 15 economies in the world. A lot of organizations want that piece, right, of that consumer spend. It's hard to get that if you don't have the Latino professional. Here's one. If you're recruiting me, this is what I'd ask you. Who's the highest ranking Latino or Latina at your organization? How many of you would know? Latinos are starting to assert their ethnicity with more confidence than ever before. My ethnicity is relevant. It's a source of strength, right? In corporate America, executives are saying, I don't want to be seen as the Latino executive, but I have no problem being seen as the executive that knows a lot about the Latino community because that's relevant. That's material because of this growing demographic. Okay? This is the group that everybody wants right now. It's the segment of the population that can be coined the upwardly mobile Latino. It's the Latino or Latina that believes a college degree is important, 
wants to be better off financially than their parents. Uh, career is career success. They, they tend to be bicultural. They see their Latinos as an asset. These are becoming more the influencers in their family. If you are trying to get more Latinos to buy your stuff, and if you are trying to get more Latinos to come to your university, the fact that I'm Latino is an asset. Don't call it an emergent market anymore. It's here. I work with a lot of the same companies that Robert does, and a lot of these companies are not that interested in African Americans anymore because we do speak English, so they don't necessarily recognize us as having differences or a different culture. Differences is not deficient. And when we understand the differences, when we understand each other, that's when we come together. Civil rights continues to be the dividing line between two mindsets, those who fought for it and those who take it for granted. The boomers versus the millennials. Still a really, really, really big deal. Being a single mom no longer means you're a bad mom. 71% of all black births are to black single moms. That's an astounding number, but it's also an opportunity. No one is telling the story of the good single mom. Where's her story? We don't hear about it. More black men are focusing on the importance of being good role modeling and being more involved fathers. You don't hear a lot about the goodness of black men. Here's some insights that we believe can help improve your cultural IQ in terms of understanding black America today. Understand the African American lens that emotions matter. Now we all have this lens and how we see the world and how we perceive how the world sees us. And for African Americans, our lens is based on our history. For many of us, slavery, post-slavery, discrimination. It is the reason why we are overly sensitive about being welcomed, respected, and stereotyped. For many of us, young and old. Bring race into the conversation. Bring culture uh, into the conversation. And remember, black is more than a color. It is an experience. It's an opportunity because black still matters. Whenever I walk into a room, I bring in my family. Does that make sense? I bring in my ancestors. If you're going to be culturally intelligent, you have to be genuinely curious. You have to be able to ask and ask questions. If you're Eastern, Eastern American, European American, British, the studies have shown that you tend to have very quick relationships. You don't go real deep. What I say is what I mean. And then uh, don't read anything into it. And then as you go to the other end of the spectrum with Asian Pacific Islanders and with the Hispanic Latino, Native Americans, also with African American, Caribbean, you tend to look at, do I know you? You know, if I'm sitting there, I'm going, oh, gee, I wonder why she's holding that clicker that way. And I wonder what her family's all about. And there's a lot more. That's why it's a lot larger underneath the surface because I really get, need to get to know who you are. And there's all the variations in between. There's no one Asian culture. There's 44 diverse countries in Asia and Southeast Asia that are included in there. Also subcontinent, Asia, uh, Indians. They, a lot of people that are from India and Bangladesh, they come in going, Claire, I'm now an Asian. <laughs> I never was before. So a lot of the experience that, uh, that Robert was talking about, also that Pepper was talking about, there are some similar aging cultural values that go across all of the cultures, but a lot of it is based on nationality. Some of the things in terms of overcoming the US stereotypes, uh, these are stereotypes that may have a little modicum of truth, but in today's environment, especially with the younger generation coming into the workplace, Asians are quiet and they're not management material. Okay, in my culture, and I, I was brought up very traditional Chinese, you waited till there was a break in the conversation and we listen, we reflect, we respond. Lack, conf lack confidence due to eye contact, depending on the culture. Eye contact is a sign of respect if I don't look you in the eye. So eyeballing is like looking you straight in the eye if you're a junior going to an elder. And the same thing does hold true in many of the Asian cultures. I have acculturated, not assimilated. Also, uh, too serious, never get the joke. Uh, we get the joke, sometimes it's just not funny. Okay, <laughs> I just want you to be real clear about that. I'm proud of my heritage now. 
I know it. My boys know it. My grandkids know it. Knowing who you are gives you a sense of being grounded. The kind of stuff, the kind of work, and the kind of people in leadership that we build here at Johnson & Wales will make a difference in the world all the way around. I'm living proof of that, and I always thank this university every day for the great education I got and the opportunity I've had uh, to lead uh, outside the industry and now here today. We'll see you again at the next Cultural Intelligence event.